off top, you know, hello, hello. Shouts out to, to um, Drop Nation. Shouts out to everybody vibing up, chopping up. You, you already know it's our time, so our time is just to shine. So there's no reason not to vibe up, you know. So I'm, um, I'm going to go ahead and start with the um, book from last week. So first, um, first paragraph. Harem is already sufficiently introduced to the reader so as to so as to make it only necessary here to say that he too was a descendant of the royal house of Jehu. Children commenced O uh, Mardisha in a low and sorrowful voice after all three had been seated. I have once more called you to my humble abode that I might speak to you of the trials and hopes of our, of our unfortunate brethren to us that look for consolation in us all their hopes and trust are centered. You, my noble you have, have already done, have already done, already done much, done much to, lighten to lighten our burdens, to kindle to the, the hopes of our dead, by your perseverance, by your perseverance and attention, and attention, attention to your hard, to your duties, hard duties, you have succeeded in gaining the esteem and the confidence of the two most powerful men of this heathen nation. Thanks to you, the severest trials of, of captive Israel have passed. The terrible, the terrible persecution has ceased. But when will captive Israel be free? When will we be allowed to pray to Hawa after the manner of our fathers, publicly, publicly, openly, without fear of, without fear and death? Shamanezer. Fresh lyrics and books. Overcome by his sorrow and bowed down by grief, he sank back in utter exhaustion. A silence of about five minutes duration ensued, after which Nahum arose and advanced to his aged relative, whose, whose hands he took and carried affectionately to his lips. Uncle, he said in a clear and manly voice, Uncle, nay, more than that, Father, let not your sorrows affect you thus. Are not, as you said yourself just now, our severest child's past? Are not we yet strong and healthy? Is not the whole universe a canaan to those who have, who have the will to make it so? And above all, have we not our, our respected wise and good old Uncle Mordice still among us? Who has ever done more to raise the drooping spirits of a nation than you, my father? You have given a new impulse to our hopes. When three years ago, you disguised as an outcast and a beggar, bereft of reason, traversed this country, traversed this country regardless of death and dangers that beset you on every side, to console our, our despairing brethren and to devise means for lightening their heavy burdens. We trembled, and on our bended knees, we we besought Hawa to watch over you and lead you back safely. Thanks to Hawaii, you did return. A, and you succeeded in your noble mission. 200 strong and able men of Israel with their families are at this moment assembled in subterranean chambers, co constructed under almost insurmountable difficulties and with almost superhuman efforts beneath our feet. Thanks to your good management, all these people are sufficiently provided with everything needed and although we do not know how you contrive to construct these subterranean vaults or to bring so many human beings safely and in spite of all the watchfulness of our enemies to your so greatly exposed cot know what your final purpose may be still we know that the, still we know that the later cannot be for the good of israel and we here once more repeat the assurance that we shall be with you even unto death. A unto death, repeated Haram. What we may have done, resumed Nahum, to gain the good will of our masters was done by your advice. And happy are we if this will add to the interest of our unhappy countrymen. But ha, what is that? 
so that's the um, c conclusion of chapter one. Chapter two is called Startling Revelations. So next show, I'll get into that. But um, now. Yeah, yeah. Shalawan. That was kind, fresh, and lyrics and books. Y'all check his show out. He dropping his show, same time every week. Still the same program. Y'all check it out. Shalom. Hey, hi up to all my tribe, as y'all know. Big up to the drop family. Y'all know that. Okay, big up to the battle family. Y'all know that. And y'all know big up to all those breads that you see right there. These are the folks behind the scenes making it work, making it go around. It's all a beautiful time. It's all a beautiful grind. All right? And y'all know that. This validated. This is a wall of protection. Y'all can go there. Y'all can vibe up. You can go there and you can check it out. It's actually a landmark. A landmark, a significant landmark in history. 432, the drop radio. So if you know what I know, get over there, man. Get in the ether. Drop some lit. Drop some knowledge. We would love to see you, man. We would love to hear from you. It's all love at all a high in that frequency. 432. You already know we chasing hounds. Chasing hounds from the barrier. You know that. Alright. So uh we wanted to get over to um you know, we're hitting you over the head with the actual, with actual treaty from 1630, what, 738? Alright. That was uh, once we had a migration of Indians already in the land of the tribes. We even had white, um, under, under, white um, Europeans under under a king under a king in Europe alright and we know the grind about that that was King Phillips and we know the grind about that this King Phillips how they interp interpreted interpreted through history is King Phillips being this white European king but we already know King Phillips is is uh, turning to also to this uh to this British king not yet changed over to the English this British black Brit king uh, y'all check into it man from the 1600s alright and um, I think um, I think um, One of the authors is dropping something on that. I can't remember his name. I think Holcomb is dropping something on that. Um, forgive me if I'm wrong. But let's get over to the uh, to this PDF. This is studying the Hebrew language and Indian languages. You know, there's been a lot of grief about this. What we want to what we want to basically see is how they coincide if they are. Um, originated if they have any origination in, in, or any uh, any origin in its uh, any origin of the same place that's what we too that's what we're pretty much looking for if they have any of the same origin or uh, is it derived from from any of the same you know maybe even other languages let's see a study in Hebrew and Indian language or is this the same thing you understand? Well, we know this Hebrew being a a, uh, a later term, of, or Indian being a later term of the Hebrew, but we know what it means. We know this Indian, when we, when it considers in the America, we're talking about the indigenous peoples of the America, all right? And so we know when we talk about this Hebrew, we know we're talking about a, a Pacific uh, melanated, Pacific melanated man. Okay, a Pacific melanated man that was scattered 
all right, that was scattered from the Americas and abroad. Okay, so this indigenous per this indigenous, this Indian, which means indigenous, we're talking about this being this person being or people being indigenous to the Americas and scattered abroad. Okay, so we're not talking about no uh no India, no India, uh Indian, even though this is India, okay, this is the Remember the Prester John and the three Indias, okay? And Prester John just meaning your priest Khan, and, and priest Khan meaning Khan meaning king, okay? So therefore, so therefore, or Khan meaning chief, chief, king, same thing, all right? Same thing. In these days, your king was your chief, okay? And in these days, your priests were your authors. Okay, so this Indian meaning the indigenous from America who was scattered. Hebrew meaning, <laughs> same thing. Same thing. Your American Negro that was scattered abroad. It means the same thing. All right, so okay, and you can see it's the feathers again. It's the feathers we rocking, so you can tell just from the interpretation that this is a later time. See what we got to understand when we go back to the uh, the picto. Okay, the picto paleo meaning ancient, right? Paleo meaning ancient. Alright. Pablo, Pueblo. Pueblo meaning ancient. Paleo meaning ancient. Then Picto meaning something even before that. So when we get to your Picto, you know what I'm saying? What they're trying to do is uh show you pictures of even a later time. Okay? Even though this Negro may seem like he have some Negro act some Negro Negro accents. Uh but yet and still, you got to understand that when they started to record time, and as we could, I can no longer say again, we talking about the first, what, the first scientific study was in the 1800s, late 1800s, and the first uh, photographic study was in the late 1800s. So we got to understand that, and those studies were of the mind. Okay, was of the peoples of that Yucatan area, or the peoples of the Americas. That's what I'm trying to tell you, peoples of the Americas. So therefore, now when they start to pick up this pen and start to write, and they start to pick up these photographs, listen, they had already played chess with us. They had already moved in the other foreign nations from other places. You know what I'm saying? They had already, you, you understand, they had already killed as many millions of indigenous black Indians here already. So you got to understand that. They had already put uh, our people on reservations and, and moved them out and, and killed them in the water already. They already took care of this the first hundred years of them coming over here. You gotta understand this. They've been doing this since the day of time, since their first arrival. Millions and millions of Indians have already died, shed blood. Okay? So when they started to record, as they say in the old days, they had already did the fixing. So our people were already replaced, okay? These people had already uh, implemented chiefs and were dealing with mixed chiefs, mixed sachems, mixed kings. Okay, and like they said, the European tribes 
how could they be actually real tribute tribes because they had a king and we know from second samuel once you have a king you give up your tribal right we talking about official kings the kings that own everything you understand you give up your right all right but a, a real hebrew knows that hawa is our king we can have no other king but Hawa. So understand that. And the real Hebrew knows that we can only be saved. Our Savior is through our Messiah. Hawashua Hamashiach. And when you get that right. You'll get your life right. Trust me. No, don't trust me. Trust and believe in our Creator, Hawa. So let's get down to business. Let's get down to business. Hold on one second. So this was published in May 1926. See, what Hebrews have to understand is that the Spanish, see, what you have to understand is that <coughs> you really don't know how to be in the law. That's why your Messiah is to show you how to conduct in the law. That's why he had to read it over to you over and over and over again. Jacob, Israel. And you got to understand that the Spanish called him Quesacota. The Spanish came over here looking for Quesacota. Huey Mock and Quesacota. They looking for Moses and Quesacota. The Greeks came over here looking for who? Looking for Christ. And y'all fail to remember that this five-toed dragon that was helping us, that was helping Yahshua fight out the Muslims and the Christians. Y'all forgot about that. And then the same stories that we talking about today when we talk about Tukumesh and Ska Watawa. Or when we talk about Mayan Tunama and his great uncle. You know what I'm saying? What was his name? Uh, Kanikanus Cannon. Yeah, Cannon. And his either foster uncle or great aunt, uncle. You know, can it? So you got to understand, man. You have to understand, Hebrew. But if you don't, then that's up to you and the Creator. I mean, I'm still here. I'm here to work with you. Anytime you need me, I'm here. I'm here. So. So, a study in Hebrew and Indian languages. Because it's all going to be about who is we. You know, it's all about who is we, who is we, who is we. I don't know who we is. Because I don't know what we entails. Is we a noun or is we a verb? You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of different we's. You understand? Like there was a question asked like, uh, is that our tribe or, or is that they tribe? I don't know who they is and I don't know who our tribe. But you got to understand that 
it's people that in your tribes today that are in the tribes today that are not full blooded Negro, right? Just like you may not be. But those people have been in those tribes and their descendants been in those tribes and mixed with your descendants and they've been in those tribes for years and they have done more in those tribes than you could ever do in a lifetime. So that's why you got to understand that you have to accept the things that you cannot change. Because if you could have, you would have changed them. They would have been changed already. It would have been a different present moment. You understand? So overstand that you have to accept someone being in your this one of your descendants that might not be full Negro. See, that's that's what. So you got to get off this this black and white thing or this black thing. Period. This is about tribes, okay? This is about nations. These tribes, these tribes are, are mixed with all type of assorts of different melanated people. Okay, just remember that. All, all relating to the indigenous people of the Americas. That's what you have to understand. So we must all come together. Because there's going to be a lot of mixed assortments in your tribe today in 2018. So let's look at the bigger picture. Okay. And let's think how. How Tukumesh thought. Let's think how Moshe thought. Let's think how Yahshua thought. Let's think how Mayatunama thought. When they said, all us Indians, we must come together. Alright, when, when, when they joined the tribes together to go fight. We all joined our tribes together to go fight. Despite our differences. Because we all have one common enemy. You know who it is? It's ourselves. <laughs> First and foremost, it's ourselves. So who is we? Because at the end of the day, I'm going to tell you who I am. And there's so many layers to this. But I'll give you one. Alright. A study in Hebrew and Indian language by Thomas W. Brookbank. Brookbank. After some, and we just read a little bit as till we get into some meat, okay? After some introductory remarks, certain words which occurs in the Indian and the ancient Hebrew languages, respectively, will be submitted for the readers, for the readers' uh, critical study. They are of a character considered with the respect of both form and sense, which we believe can hardly fail to command the assent, the, the assent of every impartial investigators, every impartial investigator as being truly uh, an, not an, a, analogous examples. All right, I don't look that word up. I know it's anal. All right, then to to these a large number of illustrations which show identical forms or a striking similarity in form in which or in part will be added in a separate list they are common property of a language in hand there are so many such to be taken in consideration that the probability that more than a small percentage of them are mere coincidence cannot be entered in reason 
okay? Changes in the spelling of the words are by no means rare, and their meaning also is subject to modification. One can scarcely keep in touch with the revised spelling of many words that are current in the present-day English. And our cousins across the sea accuse us, our cousins across the sea accuse us of applying meanings to a good many words which they cannot sanction as proper. Illustrations touching both of these matters will later be uh, supplied for the consideration of readers whose attention has not here, heretofore uh, been particularly called to them. Modifications in a uh, ortho orthography and meaning of words are of comparative frequency in America. Okay, modifications, which we know, look at the English language. In the or uh, ortho or orthography, meaning uh, mouth to speak in your geographic, I mean around the world, okay, in an oral sense, and meaning of words, and meaning of words uh, of comparative frequency in America, modifications in the oral uh, around the world and meaning of words are of comparative frequency. Okay, a comparative frequency. Okay, meaning we have different words that have different frequencies in America. Alright? Because from all over the world. Okay? More so than in other countries where English is the chief form of speech. Though we have dictionaries and other books of many kinds, magazines, newspaper, and so on, in great number and variety to preserve to us and volatile the dictum okay of our wise forefathers the dictation of our for wise forefathers respecting these points even in England where one would naturally expect the English language to be spoken in a high degree of purity and uniformity in the use of words and other meaning in their meaning there are whole communities of people who can scarcely understand what their relatives in other districts say. And in America, when talking to some of them, we will find the services of an interpreter quite a help. A reversal of these conditions does not make uh, the going any easier. All right, let's go down a little bit. Let me see. Now, when one considers that the greater part of North American Indians, all right, North American Indians had no books of any kind, nor alphabetical writings in manuscript form, okay, as they say, nor any other, for that matter, during long centuries of their history, okay, this had to be in the very beginning, it is not a marvel that more than a chance word here and there should show a Hebraic relationship in any respect or degree all right he said it is not a marvel it is not a marvel that more than a chance word here and there should show a Hebraic relationship in any respect or degree even if it be conceded by 2500 years ago their forefathers were Hebrews in very deed Okay, he says, even if it was 2,500 years ago, okay, the North American Indians, their fathers were Hebrews in very deed. In view of the past conditions of Indian life, generally one might as reasonably expect if he had a good sized Russian vocabulary to find numbers of true analogies and a great many similarities of various other kinds between the Russian and the English languages. All right, now you know your descendants were created that city they call Russia. Okay, that land, I mean, not the city, but the, the country they call Russia. You know, we, we traveled the world, uh, putting putting land in order. So you know we had uh, Moshe and the Russes over in Russia and Mos Moscow. Alright, so you know we had a kingdom over there. So therefore, 
the Russian and English language comparable to those which these pages will, will show do exist between the Indian and the Hebrew. All right. The principal sources from which the Indian names and the words have been listed together with their state meaning so far as they are given are okay Bancroft's Native Races etc volume 5 they just give a bunch of lists of seven volumes to travel okay a conquest the principal sources which the Indian names and words have been listed together with their names stated meaning so far has been given in these books so y'all check out those books Con Conquest of Mexico Aboriginal Races of North America the North American Indians Handbook of North Americans all right yeah, a lot. Some of them is government printing. So y'all, you know, as I explained earlier, you know, dodge your hijacks, dodge your own damn hijacks. But I'm pretty sure all of those books are, are um, are pretty good to get. Okay, the official issues have. First, we'll get into. We're getting a little deeper. We just we just breaking cracking cracking open the surface right now. Okay. The government issues have furnished most of the names and words. Several words that occur in the Book of Mormon are also considered in order to show a relationship between the Nephite language and the Hebrew okay or the Indian an example is also taken uh, from the Pearl of the Great Price yeah y'all check that out and um, I know Phoenix Phoenix had our sister Phoenix had brought up the Book of Mormon too because a lot of your marriages went through the churches so the Book of Mormons also had um, documentations as well as your churches okay um, of who married who in that sense okay the definition of the Hebrew words are all from Dr. Robert's Young analytical cor coordinates of the Bible alright Funk of Wagnall's edition in 1920 alright some specimens of Old English is now followed. They are copied from a volume of choice compositions entitled English Poetry. The selections were made by John Matthews mainly. So what they're basically saying, brother. Alright. So look at the bottom even. Ich, I am elder than itch west of wintry or uh, uh so they're comparing that even finding the English words, you know, in comparison. The first page we find lines of date, which about 1170 A.D. And it's showing the language how it's mixing. The English, Hebrew, and Indian. Alright, um, even when the 13th century was closed, our mother's speech was still lagging far behind its present standards. As the next selection shows, an angel thus, uh, alright. An angel thus till him can say, Rise up, Joseph. Rise up, Joseph, and bust and God. Maria and thy child, Al Sua. Alright. Uh, for for vow ye hubs all natural. Maria, we're talking about the Levite, Maria. The Levite. Alright, um. So it says, by sustaining two, four, till in these last lines, did four can, get ready for bus, go for God, al, al sua, now for new, er, follow for, folus, and wilderness for wildren. The poet's meaning will become clear, change which have occurred in English spelling between A.D. 1390, okay, and the present day of grace are so evident on the face of the specimens that special attention need not to be called to any of them till can and end serve to illustrate modifications in meaning these changes and many others have occurred in the speech of a civilization and enlightened people all right an enlightened people <clears throat> on the other hand indians have had but little assistance um, save the power of memory to preserve in purity the form of words and their meaning as their forefathers used them and as stated all right you heard him you heard him talking about you not he said on the other hand the indians have had but little assistance save the power of memory to preserve in purity 
the forms of the words and their meanings as their forefathers used them. So they're saying we did it all on our own. As stated before, it is little short of a marvel to find any correspondence between the speech of Indians and the language of the Hebrews. Even allowing that the two peoples are racially a unit. The evidence supplied of the face of the quoted passage is proof. This is does not this that it does not follow that in cases where both form and sense do not characterize words taken from different languages, the similarity in form, the similarity in form is to be regarded as a mere coincidence and nothing more. You're yeah, right. The most that should be claimed in such cases is that the similarity of form may be merely coincidental. All right, yeah, okay. When, however, the number of corresponding, that is never coincidental. Uh, the number of corresponding forms is usually, is usually large. Okay, and, and basically, what he must don't know, that we read over in the, uh, I forgot it, one of the, I think it was the, in the, uh, the Yucatan, the conquest before the conquest of the Yucatans that we learned that it was we had more languages in 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 North America than they had in Africa period okay we had more Indian tribe languages okay every time someone came in we mixed and there became another language between the two languages okay and we learned it with ease overstand so therefore we had many languages and we mixed our languages together to form new languages. So you can't, man, come on. Only thing we can do is put the words together in similarity. So it's no coincidence. It's no coincidence. All right, so let's go down a little bit. All right. Consideration of the words that have been listed in the next order. Okay, and the name, Utah right shall be taken up first it is one of the wide use and has been applied to the Indians in one form or another in Arizona Idaho Oregon Nevada and Khalifa California in the western in the western parts of the United States or we say America America Amarukan while in the eastern districts in a variant form as Utah with the E, E U T A W. All right, in the Eastern Districts, Utah, Utah. All right, it is used as a name of a town in Alabama. And in 1781, a battle was fought between the British and the Amarukans, the Americans, at the Utah with the E U T A W Springs in South Carolina. All right, Utah, U T A. H, Utah, Y U T A H, Utah, E U T A W, and U T, U T E are names applied to an Indian language. Paiute, P A U T E, Paiute, P A H U T A H, and P U T, P I U T E literally mean the river Utah. The river Utah. Judah. Yauda, Ayuda. Utah has spoken by certain Indians living on the Colorado River. Yampa, Utah, designates the Uti, who coincide with the Uchi, all right, um, who live or have lived south of the Unitas. south of the Unitars and you gotta understand that when we talk about Mississippi we talking about a whole lot more than Mississippi we talking about Carolinas, Alabamas, Louisiana we talking about a whole lot of land okay so yam yam Y-A-M is a Hebrew form which, among other things, means south. Alright. 
so that's what we have to understand I, and I and it's crazy because I made a video once and I, I'm, I'm naming a video I titled and I say Yah uh, Yah is not Hebrew and I was wrong for that but young and dumb you know not overstanding everything not overstanding moderation not overstanding the addition of, of the vials you know it, it, it it's all it's all profitable prophetic it's all prophetic as we should say <clears throat> whether if you feel it's bad or good excuse me sorry so therefore yam is a hebrew form which yah is too okay How would you have Yasharala? Alright. Yah is Yasharala. So Yam is a Hebrew form which, among other things, means south. Here we have an example where a Hebrew word has a corresponded in both in both form and sense in Indian speech okay a Hebrew word a, a Hebrew word has a correspondent in both form and sense in Indian speech in indigenous American speech further we find in Hebrew the names Juta Juta Jatba or Jata and according to Dr. Young, Juta and Juta are either of them pronounced as if spelled Yuta. Yuta with a Y. Now turning to the name Jatba, which is found alphabetically in the place in the body of the court of the concordance. Alright. We are there told that Jatba is the same as Juta, an ancient town in Judea, now called Jata which is no far away variant of Yata or Utah. The meaning of Jatba is given as an excellent for water. Other proper Hebrew names spelled with the initial J in English should also be pronounced as if their first letter was Y. There was no letter in the ancient Hebrew alphabet that English J is equivalent of and for this reason Dr. Young authorizes the change in the form of the pronunciation of the words in hand in about 300 examples of the Bible biblical Hebrew proper names which are spelled in English with the initial J are learned Hebraeus authorizes the substitute of Y for J in this proper form in this proper form, Yata is Jata. Yata and Utah are close variants of one another. Alright, Jata, Jata, or Jadba, and Jata are all being names applied to the same place. And thus, evidently having the same meaning, we see how appropriately this state has been given the name which it bears. Namely, Utah. Utah which already observed means excellent for water within its boundaries there is a large inland sea several several uh, fresh water lakes of fair size many smaller ones while a number of rivers are fed from its mountain ranges and numerous small streams course down its canyons and make fruitful uh, of the rich remember we went into that we went into the water canyons Alright, get that video where we went to the water cannons of Utah. Alright, in the valleys. Talking about their water supply. Alright, in its mountain ranges and numerous small tr streams course down its canyons and make fruitful the rich soil of its valleys. Alright, and then a very excellent quality of its drinking water, it's taken into the consideration also. Who can think of a more appropriate name for this member of American Union than Utah, Judah, 
which is short for the excellent for water a present white people at present white people and likely Indians also all right but it is evident that the Hebrews in Judea thousands of years ago had it all right within in sequential difference all right in the oral the or, or orthography and then gave it to a meaning which makes it remarkable fitting to advertise it in a single word certain natural conditions and resources of great value with which Utah is blessed Baruch it is remarkable that the Indians have preserved the ancient form of the name in what is essential purity see the note see the note near bottom of the page 25 all right, we'll go over a couple of English words. A couple of Hebrew words. All right, the given Hebrew definition perform remarkable service. All right, India, Indians. Okay, it goes over another description, but I'm going to drop that link. Y'all can check it out. All right, I want to check out this Yucatan. All right, Indians. Now, Yucatan, concerning the derivation, now we know Yucatan, right? That is the South. That is Mississippi. <laughs> you understand? That is off the Gulf Coast. The Gulf Coast goes right into the Mississippi River, or the Mississippi River goes right into the Gulf Coast. Okay, so the Yucatan, all right? Now we'll get in when we when we get into the actual book, which we will today, before uh, and after the conquest, Yucatan before and after. Now we get into the uh, the name, the original name of Yucatan. All right. Now they say that when the Indians or when the, when the indigenous they asked them who land it was, they said it was our land, right? And they and then they asked them. This was they was talking to the Spanish. They asked the they, the Spanish asked the, the Mayan Indians. They said this is this is our land, and they said, "Well, how you know it's your land?" They said, "Because we say so, right?" So in in our language, because we say it means uh, sort of like Yucatan. It means we said Sia Siathan Siakan. Uh, let me find it real quick. Yeah, we said Siutan. 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 Alright? Siutan means they say it. Because <laughs> they say it. Alright? It's our land because we say it. They say it. Alright? So, so therefore, so they, so they, with their tongue, said, alright, we call it Yucatan. Alright? This was the Spanish. All right, so so let's see. So let's see what they say. Yucatan concerning the derivation of the name Yucatan, we are informed in NR five six one five that all agree that the name Yucatan originated from a misunderstanding by the Spaniards of the word first pronounced by the natives or the indigenous when questioned about the name of their country. However, it is safe to say that if the if the Indians gave the name of their country either correctly or incorrectly, when the Spaniards when the Spaniards inquired about it, the reply must have sounded in the ears of the questions very much like Yucatan. Alright? And remember it was Siutan. Siutan. So they said Yucatan. Alright. Yucatan does when spoken. For if they suspect they had mis misapprehended the answer, is it not strange they did not continue to make in inquiries until they did get a correct understanding of the, of the name they asked for? The question was one of no little importance. Some, circumstance, some circumstances in the case indicate that a proper answer was given 
to it by the indigenous as near as the Spaniards understood it was Yucatan. The writer believes that by appealing to the Hebrew we can get it all the light that is needed to make it clear the derivation of the name in hand and at the same time sustain the reply of the natives as correct. Alright, so Yuk as Uk. Alright, Katan, Katan. The first of these words mean to be pressed, crush, or Katan is Hebrew for little or small. In compound form, two words make Katan or Ukatan with U long. You, you, either of them, there are no apresia. Ah, it don't sound like they know what they're talking about. Alright. Uh, Katan, Yucatan. Alright, I look like they just guessing, so I'm gonna leave that alone. Alright, they even got one for Balam. Balam, Balam. It seems certain that the later city Copan owned the origin of the fierce warrior named Balan, who had entered the country by way of Patan Itza. Alright, Patan Itza, Patan. Patan is a certain place in, uh, where is that? Mississippi too? Or, or in the Yucatan. Yeah. In the Yucatan. About 15 centuries before the Spanish conquest. It goes without saying that this founder of the Copan must have been a chief or a lord over the considerable colony of the immigrants. Or he could not have accomplished so great. Huh? So great of a work as that with which he accredited. Other ancient Americans were also known by the name of Balam, as, for example, Balam Quis, Balam Agab, Inqui Balam, and others. All right, but you hear what it says. It goes without saying that this founder of Copan must have been chief or lord over a considerable colony of immigrants, or he could not have accomplished so great of a work as that which which he is accredited all right so what he's talking about a colony of immigrant other Indians so-called Indians coming over to the Americas all right I told you guys I told you all right so these three uh, what do you say Balam Quis was the paternal ancestor of the first royal Kichi family. These three Balams and other persons by the name of Mahukata were the rulers of high priests of the people as long as they lived. And after their death, royal rights and dignity were attained by some of their descendants. It is evident from the story concerning the warrior Balam, the founder of the co founder of Copan and also from the account relating to Balaam Quis, all right, and his associated high priest, that one of people as well as other had, had published a migration before they settled down in a permanent home, respecting the travels of later. It is stated that the journey had been a long one, all right. Balaam, the name which has come through Hebrew sources to us, to us is but straight variant of the Hebrew of the Hebrew, I mean, or Indian name Balaam. It seems to have been quite a favorite with some ancient Americans. The meaning Balaam, as Doctor Young gives it, is pilgrim or Lord of the people. All right, the meaning Balaam is pilgrim. All right, why would Balaam mean pilgrim? Because like he said, he was lord over immigrants. Over immigrants would be foreign. Alright? So y'all, watch your hijacks. But yet and still, he came over. And like you said, always Israel. Even when Israel and Edom merge. Edom, you don't, Israel don't practice Edom. Alright? Esau step up and be king of Judah. You understand? But he practiced Judah's faith. So that's what this Balaam practiced, this faith. So when you get over here, 
even though they mix you know mix the uh, face with different just like they did the languages they mixed the face with their face and so you had different proxies of certain religions that's how you got all these different tribes and different beliefs because they were mixing the beliefs so they're mixing these indigenous beliefs with with their beliefs that's how the Greeks mix uh, their language with Hebrew and so they're telling you how we mix the Maya with the Itza alright or the or the Inca the Maya and the Inca okay and the Itza so alright so who are we so understand we are a plethora of people that join together all with the melanin of the Hebrew you understand and we represent Israel Jacob So, who are we? For one, we drop nation. We drop nation, man. We're the children of the Creator. We looking for our homes, and we all looking in the right place, baby. If you're looking here, you're looking in the right place. Well, 
if that's how this sand is reacting, or you can watch your somatics experiments, you can see how water itself reacts when light hits the medium, sound, light, water. You put that vibration in the water and you see that light and it looks like a star and you're like, wow, the water's above, the water's below. Then the only journey for the drop or for it to the drop is to be pure water, to be hijacked free. We can't be everything to everybody. We can't be likable <laughs> like that to everything and everybody. That's just not how frequency works. There is static. There's misinterpretation when you deal with water. Because again, sometimes it's going to wash you up. Sometimes it's going to, you know, sweep the sand right under your feet. And at any time, just like in life, you have to be prepared to be water. Just to just to be. You're not always going to be able to surf the wave. I mean, it, it sounds dope, right? I mean, surf the wave, get out your boogie board. It sounds dope, but you're not always going to be able to surf the wave in life. You're going to have to become water to a point where the static don't got nothing to do with your frequency. I always say, man, if it can break, let it be broke. What are we? What are we doing? What is Drop Nation? I like to see it as a community first, <laughs> community based, you know, platform for communication, platform for for assemble, the assembly, to assemble. And if we ain't coming together, if we're not assembling, if we're not gathering the flock, we ain't doing shit. Yeah, at first it was music, but you notice I don't, I'm not even, you know. I'm putting all that into the vibe suites, and I hope you're enjoying it, because as long as we get off that frequency, cool. If we can help our brothers and sisters in their house, and they can put on these vibe suites, and they can just relax, and they can calm them down, and they can be in a good frequency, then you can start to process information. Then you can start to relate different things differently, because you're under a different vibration. You're, you're taking a step to be in a different vibration. The same thing with your diet. When you are getting off that flesh, you know what I'm saying, when you get out there, all that dairy, and all that shit, man, it's like, at some point, you begin to be water, you begin to be the frequency of water, the clarity, the electricity, so look, man, you know, aside from having the mission to promote vibration awareness, whether it's through a radio platform, which is coming soon, but man, you know, it's the setup is crazy. You know what I'm saying, but I know it's worthwhile because of the communication. Uh, my brothers behind the scenes, you know what I'm saying, I love all y'all, you know who you are that I'm building with to get, you know, a nice situation going, you know what I'm saying, with land and how we can do it to assemble, you know what I'm saying, a hijack free territory. Yeah, it's not just some public thing. It is something that we are doing as a community with those that we want to build with because we want to build with them. But we're setting an example for other people to build. Now, Jay Stu just drops and drop, man. Y'all go check out Jay Stu. I love you, brother. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He's it's, it's his wonderful queen, man. She's just so full in, in energy, man. You just know that the brother supported 100%, man. And, and without that support, without that strength, there's no way the brother would be, you know, able to stand oh, as wow. firm as he is, man. So the creator has given him a wonderful counterpart. Love to Jay Stu and Camille. Oh, wow. Love to the fam that, you know what I'm saying, Mario. And, and I'm, I'm sorry I forgot the sister's name, but love to you, sister, you know what I'm saying? Because when I see y'all up there, man, it, it's like, you know, you know that the most high is assembling. And the brother's right. Don't wait for anybody to be hijacked free. Don't wait for a drop to, to, to develop a plan for you. The drop got to develop a plan for the community that's rocking with the wave that, 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 that we're on, but you're on your wave. Either way, we're gonna be water. Either way, I can't judge the design of your particular way. All I can say that as a platform, we are assembling a refuge. A refuge for the community that's on the grid and off the grid. The Most High has given us a platform to communicate so that those that decide to say, hey, you know what I'm saying, we just wanna make this particular journey like Jay, you know what I'm saying? Look, Jay Stu is on such a beautiful way that he's like, man, he's a step away from, you know, being in the point where, hey, you know, he's he's fully 
depending on the career. You know what I'm saying? And for us, as we build with Jay, as, as we build with the family, we're all coming together to understand that we have to work together as we do. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? We hope that, <laughs> you know, we can get every bit of, you know what I'm saying, you know, Jay, as we continue to build our situation, Jay might decide, to, hey, I got to go, <laughs> you know, remove all hijacks, remove all technology. And that's every bit of what we're doing is what we're supposed to do. But we always are going to be here, man. We're always going to be here and set up what we got to set up and do what we got to do. So that whether I'm someplace or whether somebody is someplace, we have someplace. It's not about who is where and what is what. It's about yeah. having it. It's about having a step, having an assembly. Having a, a, a foundation, man. So what we're setting up is a foundation. Somewhere, you know what I'm saying, for those to say, hey, you know, I'm done. Wow. I'm done. I'm done ignoring the fact that I'm living in a system, a recent system, based on admiralty and the laws of the sea. Admiralty sea law and maritime, maritime law. They have me on times and balls, and they're switching them, and they're switching my timelines, and they're putting me on a ball, and they're spinning me around. I'm, I'm done. And those that just want to say, hey, you know, what is it like to, you know, pitch a tent and, and, and just rock my commandment? You know, if we're not gathering, we're scattering. So I'm just so proud, man, of the fam again. Go check out Jay, because he's telling you the truth. Don't wait for nobody, man. They over there camping for free in Zion now. By the time we get our situation set up, they're going to have so much drop, it's going to be amazing. You know what I'm saying? And it makes all the sense in the world for the water to come together. It makes all the sense in the world for the water to come together. We do have an emergency fund set up specifically for those such as Jay Stu that have been on, you know what I'm saying, dropping their vids and, and putting themselves and their family out there. For those that say, hey, it's time to go now. Hey, it's a few hundred. We're going to keep contributing to that. There will be a few thousands and more and more so that we have that emergency resource for our particular community. Our particular community that we know is hijacked free, that we know. Because, you know, I mean, let's keep a trip. We always have those that are in desperate situations that want to take advantage of this, this, and this. We don't have a fund to get people, you know, that want to move to Utah or move to a certain city and set up in the city and do all that one day, one day we're just getting started, we love our fan but we can't exhaust funds for any city issues or car issues or stuff like that when you're just living in the city, but for those that are truly getting off the grid and those that are literally wilderness bound and they need a tent or they need a meal or they need these type of things, we can do that for those especially Right now, we are prioritizing that for our YouTube community. And if you want to, uh, you know what I'm saying, support those that you've been getting dropped from, I mean, that's, this is just where we're starting at. This is just the beginning. You know what I'm saying? But we can't be everything, everybody at every time. And at some point, we got to take a step back and just re-identify, you know what I'm saying, re-paint the picture, you know what I'm saying, for ourselves. You know what I'm saying? With our creator, who are we? Who is Drop Nation? We are a nation of water. And we're finding that narrow road and that narrow stream, but we realize, man, the truth has us surrounded and the water has us surrounded and we can truly be water and be who we are. Now, someone might be something else and might be able to do something else. What we can do is dedicate ourselves to dropping the true and real pure water getting the real babies out the bath water to get our understanding, to get our overstanding, our, our, our spiritual, you know what I'm saying, our, our, our great spirit that's created this wonderful, you know, playground for us. This is a playground. So as we connect back to that playground, yeah, man, we are building our refuge. This is what we are doing. We're not asking for help to build a refuge. We're doing it. And Jay Stu, man, you know, is the tip of that arrow, man, that, you know what I'm saying, we'll always, you know, uh, uh, praise the creator for, you know what I'm saying, because he got his focus on that. Again, I'm not the <laughs> move to Utah, go to Utah, or perish guy, you know what I'm saying? I'm not the person that ever told you or is telling you 
go here or perish or do this or perish. I'm saying we are a community becoming Indians again. We are Indians being Indians. We are connected back to our indigenous truth. So as you do that, as you vibrate, you know that the most high is order and no order never destroys order. So if you're not in chaos, your creator is your shield. If you are in order of your creator, that is always and has always been your shield. Now as a community, how can we assemble and do that together? So you, you, you'll definitely get way more drop as we get you know, closer to that. You know what I'm saying? For those that are truly seeking to be hijacked free, truly seeking to assemble. Um, again, our emergency fund right now is for those that want to support the community that you know, that you've been digging on. A lot of people have disconnected from the TV. You know what I'm saying? They they just surf with Drop Nation. They surf with Drop Nation. That's my brother L. Hawakwam. You know he's still around. He's still around, baby. This is real business. Tribe up, man. Tribe up or die. So I had to just give it to you real again, man, for some of you that's confused. I mean, it ain't nothing to say. Uh, L put it down. So it ain't nothing really to say. Who are you? He gave you the foundation of what it's all about, and we have a big wall of protection to support that. So you can see I ain't got to validate it. We didn't ask nobody for nothing because we didn't want no misunderstandings or we didn't want to vibrate, have land, have to share land with some people that wasn't vibrating high. So it's all good, man. We're going to continue to do our thing and continue to confide and abide in the Creator. All right, so yeah, man, so this rave is real, so if you surfing it, you surfing it, you family. All right, so in a minute we'll be giving more requests about, you know, more uh, solutions to what's really going on. All right, so I want to get back into that, into that, into that Maya drop, man. Let's go back into it. Hold on one second. Yeah, let's get back into that Maya. Alright, so when we get down to here, we see Balam. Alright, it seems certain that the later city, Copan, owned its origin to a fierce warrior named Balam, who had entered the country by way of Patan Itza. Okay, about 15 centuries before the Spanish conquest. Alright. It goes without saying that this founder of Copan must have been chief or lord over a considerable colony of immigrants or he could not have accomplished so great a work as that which he is accredited. Other ancient Americans were also known by this name Balam. Right, Balam as, for example, Balam Quis, Balam Aga, Balam uh, and others. Balam Quis was the paternal ancestor of the first royal Kichi family. All right, these three Balams and other persons by the name of Mahukuta were the rulers or high priests of people as long as they lived. And after the death of royal rights and indignity, and dignity were attained by some of their descendants, it is evident that the story concerning that warrior Balam, the founder of Kopan, and also from the account relating to Balaam Quis and his associated high priest. All right. So look, let's go to Numbers 22. Now I'm going to show you how this relates stri strictly to the Torah. Because you people think it's a game. One minute you think the Bible is fake. And you worshiping medicine masks. 
and then one minute you think you ain't indigenous to this land and I'm going to show you how Egypt they made Egypt right here you didn't have to go nowhere Egypt was right here you didn't have to go nowhere and I'm going to show you how they say when even most high say I'm going to send you in the foreign land no I'm going to make your land foreign that's what I'm going to do I'm going to make your land foreign go to Numbers 22 I'm going to show you how all this go together. Alright. Now if ain't nobody showed you how this goes. I'm going to show you how Indian documents. Indigenous American documents. Native American. Uh, whatever. I'm going to show you how these documents go. Directly with the scriptures. Go to Numbers 22. We're hour 15 in. So if you ain't. If you didn't watch the beginning. If you didn't watch the video, then you just missed it. We're hour and 15 in. If you if you tuned out, now I'm, then you're just going to miss how the scriptures go directly with our ancient indigenous documents. Numbers 22. Indigenous documents about the native history. All right. In, uh, of, of when you were colonized. Of when your land became Egypt. I'm going to show you. Go to Numbers 22, and you're going to see how this coincides. Who is this Balaam? Now, if you know uh, Balak, who was Zippo's son, right? Zippor, who, um, who was Zippor's son, right? Zippor, the Moabite king, all right? How the Moabite king sent... He basically sick Balaam on you, man. He sick Balaam on you, and I'm gonna show you. <clears throat> Go to Numbers. I'm gonna show you. No, I'm gonna show you. Now, uh, now Balaam was the son of Beor. All right, who was living, living near you, near the your face? I'll show you. Numbers, numbers. Go to numbers. <clears throat> go to numbers twenty-two. Y'all there yet? All right, numbers twenty-two. I'm gonna read it from my script, so it's gonna be a little different. Numbers twenty-two. This is where Balak sins for Balaam. Alright. Then the people of Israel traveled to the plains of Moab. The people of Israel traveled to the plains of Moab. And camped east to the Jordan. East of the Jordan River. Across from Jericho. Balak son of Zippor the Moabite king. Had seen everything that the Israelites did to the Amorites and when the people of Moab saw how the Israelites there when the people of Moab saw how many okay <clears throat> and when the people of Moab saw how many Israelites there were, they were terrified. The king of Moab said to the elders of Midian, this mob would devour everything in sight, like an ox devours grass in the field. Right? So Balak, King of Moab sent messengers to call Balaam, son of Beor, who was living in his native land of Pether, near the Euphrates River. His message said, Look, a vast horde of people has arrived from Egypt. They cover the face of earth and are threatened and are threatening me. They cover the face of the earth and they are threatening me. 
please come come and curse these people for me because they are too powerful for me then perhaps I will be able to conquer them and drive them from the land I know that blessings fall on any people you bless and curses fall on any people you curse now understand this one thing now when they saying you went to Moab no nah, no nah. listen and understand one thing you came with Joshua from the promised land alright I mean from Egypt you came over into the American lands now these people are saying now that's how the scriptures are changed because but it then it verifies it when it gets down to it when it gets down to him saying that um look all right this is in verse um this is verse what verse is that? seven go to verse six all right right here he said look this is the message that he sent to Balaam he said, look, a vast horde of people has arrived from Egypt. They cover the face of the earth and are threatening me. Please come and curse these people for me because they are too powerful for me. Then perhaps I will be able to conquer them and drive them from the land. I know. All right. So he said, I'll be able to conquer them and drive them from the land right so what's one way that he's doing that now it's telling you that you're not from here and he's driving you out the land how is he cursing you he's cursing you by making you think that you're from Africa that you're not from here Do you understand that? So you're fighting over the wrong thing, man. And you're fighting the wrong people. You're fighting people that belong here. Just like you do. So we got to stop that shit and point the direction in the right way. So he said, put a curse on these people. Please come curse. Come curse. Please come curse these people for me because they are too powerful for me. They cover the face of the earth and are threatening me. This is Balak. These are Moabites. Moab king, the son of a Moab king. He said he's seen what the Israelites done to the Amorites. Right? And you don't even know that really an Amorite is an Israelite or can be an Israelite if he follow his laws, statutes, and commandments. So don't let this revised scripture fool you. Because remember the Most High said. Your authors. Uh, change the scriptures. So don't brag about a book that's been changed. Don't quote the book that's been changed. So therefore, man, we're, I'm going to get on out of here with that. So that basically lets you know. That basically lets you know. That it's a lot you need to know in that Torah. Because that Torah, it's a lot you don't know. Especially if you think that Torah ain't got nothing to do with you. Especially if you think that 
Pentatalk don't got nothing to do with you. So man, let's look deep into our history. Not history, not history, our history. Y'all remember this law, because this law is vibration. I wanted to get into the uh, the conquest, man, but I don't even feel like it. I don't even think it's, it's all you need is this hour and a half, baby. So Shalawam, man, Shalawam to all my Hebrews all over, all over, Africa, all over, Spain, Europe, Asia, Middle East, all over, man, Palestine, all over. In Seville, all over. Ukraine's all over. Russia, all over, man. Shim, what it do, 